Hello everyone, I'm Jesse Crawl. Welcome to Tommy Media's The Locker Room. Building on its second Stag Bowl appearance in four seasons, the St. Thomas football team has 63 newcomers from 10 different states arriving in the fall. Those players have the good fortune of learning from veterans on both sides of the ball. On the offensive side, all Mayak wide receiver Nick Waldvogel returns. And next year's team will build on the tradition established by players such as Charlie Dowdle, who was invited to the Chicago Bears minicamp. I'm joined today by Coach Glenn Caruso and Wal Vogel. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks for having Thanks us. For having Coach, us. as I mentioned before, that you guys went to your second Stag Bowl appearance in four seasons. As yeah. a coaching staff, too, you also got to look at how building onto success can carry into the offseason. So what is the big factor that the coaches must do to keep that success going into the offseason and to, into this season? A lot, of it, season? a lot of it's the culture of the team, and I think that was one of the many blessings that last year's senior class gave to us was their leadership. Certainly their abilities were highlighted in the fall, but even more so just the culture that they laid down uh, was so impressive and that was able to not just carry over but we were able to build upon it and although yes it's our job as coaches to make sure that that continues a lot of it is passed down uh, from generation to generation of, of players so as the next group of seniors you know we graduated 26 unbelievable young men and uh, next year we have 27 more who are ready to go and uh, Nick is one of those. Nick, coach has touched on it. He's losing 26 seniors. One of those was quarterback John Gould, who started for two seasons. What's the difference between going from a starting quarterback to one new under center, or maybe someone like Alex Fenske, who has got that experience but hasn't started all season? Uh, well, I think it, the biggest thing is just redefining the roles of the, the quarterback. So um, Gould was a really established quarterback, and he was a great quarterback. I mean, I played with him at St. Thomas Academy and then now at UST receiving from him. But um, I think just the, redefining the roles in the offense and how – uh, different people have uh, different uh, responsibilities as leaders uh, will be the biggest change. Not only losing Gould, you're also losing four offensive linemen. So what's going to be tough about getting those new offensive linemen? What does the offense need to do so you guys don't have that breakdown of the offensive line position? I think the biggest thing is, again, just redefining who we are as an offense. Uh, last year's team is gone. Coach Harps on this all the time. Last year's team is gone. And while we still do have the culture from last year, uh, it's a brand new group of people and a brand new uh, uh, I should say, attitude from the team. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I think the offensive line, uh, them coming along together in the spring ball, they really started to mesh. And I think they're really going to start spending more time together and getting better as a unit. Coach, switching sides. The defense is only losing four seniors right. graduating. That's great for a defense coming back. That only, excuse me, that only allowed 12 points per game nearly. So what's going to be crucial to get those different levels of that defense really back to the success that they had last season? The level of experience that we have returning is as high as it's ever been. Um, one of the things, the statistics I love, I'm not a big stats guy, but one I loved last year was uh, we had uh, only three new bodies um, starting on defense, but we had six new guys in roles. Uh, Nick spoke very well about redefining your role and, and always moving forward, and a lot of it is those guys who are moving into roles left behind by guys like Eric Sutton, by guys like uh, Jordan Young and Moses Aquina being Timmy McClanahan, being able to not just be a Timmy McClanahan, but be the best version of that person that he can be. One of the benefits is that we played with so many kids last year. I mean, several games we played with over 100 guys, and the rhythm and flow of a game will play with over 40. A lot of those guys, specifically freshmen and sophomore last year, got a ton of reps rolling in. Is there one area of the defense where you kind of seem to focus on this offseason where it might be a little more concerning than other parts of the defense? All of it's a concern. I mean, you can probably do that more so on offense because you control where the ball goes and when it goes there. On defense, you don't control it. So uh, having a, a, an appropriate level of athleticism, toughness, and selflessness uh, relative to the, the mean of what the average player is, is is really ultimate on defense. And you really can't go – we're not going to go in it and say, well, I have to focus on this or this. If it's not cohesive and all working together, it's not going to work. We'll be back after this short message with former Tommy tight end and Chicago Bears prospect Charlie Dottle. Barbers learn the traditional techniques of barbering. We utilize straight edge, razors. We do a lot of clipper cuts, a lot of tapering, fading. I've been in this location for 12 years. I have uh, clients that have been cutting their hair since they were four years old. Get to have conversations with these kids and it keeps me on my toes. I'm joined now by Charlie Dottle, who was invited to the Chicago Bears rookie minicamp, which begins in two weeks. Congrats, Charlie. Thank you, Jesse. So when the Bears called you, what was the feelings like? What were the emotions going on like right there? Uh, I was just kind of waiting for the, a call uh, Saturday and Sunday, and uh, uh, talk, I've been talking to my agent, and he was kind of, he didn't know if anyone was going to call, and then got a text from him saying the Bears are interested, and then got a call about 10 minutes after that, so it was pretty exciting. So um, 
just, yeah, it's really exciting. So a lot of players usually don't get this type of experience or opportunity to continue their NFL dream. So what was it like leading up to the draft and now, right now, after, lead, after the draft? Uh, just a lot of work going in, leading up to the draft and um, not really sure what was going to happen. Um, so just kind of keeping some faith and hoping for the best. And then uh, now I'm just excited and ready for the opportunity. Were the Chicago Bears the only team that were looking at you? Were you kind of in talks with other teams? Uh, you know what was going throughout on? Throughout the whole process, I talked to about five or six teams. Um, and then the Bears, I went down to the Bears' local pro day about two, three weeks ago. Um, and then they ended up having some interest enough to bring me back down there. So, so is it better that's a hometown team than, uh, let's say, the Miami Dolphins <laughs> or the Houston Texans, someone like that? I would have taken anyone, but um, it's cool that I grew up watching the Bears and I've always been a big fan of them. Um, but, yeah, I would have taken any, any sort of opportunity, but it's fun that's the Bears. Now, Coach, obviously Charlie Dottles was a great specimen junior, senior year, uh, sophomore year, too. Mm -hmm. uh, what makes him such a great talent, and what makes him such a great prospect for the Chicago Bears? You know, we, we don't have enough time in the show to do that, but I, I will say, I mean, there's the, the list is so long. What I will say is Charlie is an absolutely perfect microcosm of what this program's like and what we expect out of our kids and what they're willing to give. I mean, here's a guy, Charlie, comes in at about 200 pounds with a big frame and every year puts on about 10 pounds. As Nick was saying earlier, redefined his role going from a dominant wide receiver into playing a tight end and then grew from that. Um, he, he's not only one of our best players, which I understand, uh, but he's one of our most selfless young men, the most thoughtful guy maybe I've ever coached in my life and one of the best people. So obviously, um, I think there's a lot of attributes he brings to the table, but I'm just very excited that he has an opportunity. There's nothing that this young man can't do if given the opportunity. Now, I don't, I don't want to take away from anything from him, but do you think it was timeliness too that kind of helped with that too? Because the Chicago Bears, uh, let's say if they didn't have a, they, let's say if they had a superstar tight end or something like that. For sure, what I've learned, you know, we, we've done this about a little over 20 years, and um, I didn't really understand. 15 years ago how it worked, I just thought the best guys went on. Um, as you start to get older and learn the application of timing in life, you realize a lot of it has to do with what something, a culture, a team is looking for when you have an opportunity to offer it, and that's really what happened with Charlie. So uh, I believe they didn't take a tight end in the draft, is Correct. that right? And then uh, for them to call him up uh, the day after and bring him in is, is great. But whatever happens uh, is going to happen, but now we know he at least has that chance and that opportunity. Like I said earlier, I know Charlie will make the most out of it. Chuck, again, congrats, Coach. These Thank past you. four years have been incredible. Um, hosting this show, having fun with you, having fun with you every four years, covering you guys is great, and I'm glad you uh, made so much dedication to this program at Time of Media. Jess, one of the things I love about being in college is you're able to see the maturation of the kids all the way on campus, all the way through, and the, your growth mirrors his growth very similarly, and very proud to be a part of this program and have you on it. So thank, thank you so you. much, Coach. Yep, you're welcome. Thanks for watching. With Coach Glenn Caruso, Charlie Dowdle, and our earlier guest Nick Waldvogel, for one last time, I'm Jesse Crawl. Next fall, Tommy Media will continue the locker room.